Hello everyone and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in because what I have to show you today is nothing less beautiful than the turquoise colored Ala Kul Lake high up in the mountains of Kyrgyzstan. I hiked for three days, made friends with a Kyrgyz couple and slept in my tent and in a yurt. The hike was pretty tough but with this view it was definitely worth it. Good morning from Karakul! I say good morning, but it's so late again. It is 1 p.m. and I'm starting my hike. What's wrong with me? Today I'm gonna hike the Alako Pass, which is one of the most famous hiking trails here in Kyrgyzstan. And it's supposed to have a wonderful view of Alako Lake. I'm very excited. The weather is not optimal. It's been raining in the morning. Uh, I hope for good weather when I see the lake. After that, I don't care. It's a three-day hike, but you can also do it in two days if you take taxis. I have my sleeping bag, my yoga mat and a tent. But there are also yours on the way where you can sleep. Woo! Let's go! To reach a park entrance, I took the 101 marshal pair, which stopped on the opposite side of Duet Hostel. The whole hike is 50 kilometers and I plan to do 15 today. I decided to do the hike counterclockwise so I will end it in Arashan where hot springs will be waiting for me. My bag will be much lighter once I eat all these veggies and fruits. I had only started walking when a car appeared and took me for about 3 kilometers. He saved the time that I lost in the morning. I didn't even try to hitchhike and he stopped for me. So from here I start my real trek. It is the last village before pure nature. So many horses and cows are roaming around freely. I know that cows can be pretty aggressive, but here they are very friendly. Instead, the path became dangerous. It was super muddy because it was raining so much before, ah. so I had to find a way through the danger zone. Oh, oh god. <laughs> The hike on the first day is not very difficult, it's mostly flat. The cord I've bought before looks like horse pellets. <laughs> On the way I met Nazik and Azamat, a Kyrgyz couple, and we decided to walk together a little bit. As luck would have it, Nazik studied German, and she also had lived in Germany as an au pair for a while. So we talked in German to practice a little bit, and I was so surprised she spoke almost perfectly. After five hours and right before darkness, we arrived at Camp One. 
I know that the cost for sleeping in a yurt are 40 euros in this place, so I was prepared to sleep in my tent. But Ernst, Perfect. the owner of the yurts, had two <laughs> empty ones this? and he proposed to us that we can oh. sleep there for free. That was very That's friendly cool. of him because he knew it would be a very cold night. But also I understood wow. he's a good businessman, so yeah, I was see. happy to tip him afterwards and he accepted. He and his trainees invited me to dinner in their yurt. They fried fish they caught freshly right before and I shared my fried vegetables with them. They joked about that if a dish doesn't contain meat, it's not a real meal, but still they ate some. Do you put sneakers inside? Uh, advertising of, uh, <laughs> of this white milk. What's this with milk? <laughs> Traditional way yeah. to drink milk. Bosnia gave and Serbia gave. He also asked me whether I know what's the sign on the Kiki's flag and I said, I don't know, a ball? He replied by pointing at the roof of the yurt. Seems like I have my own yurt tonight. Cute, isn't it? <laughs> Welcome to my crib. <laughs> so spacious. And it's way warmer than my tent. The walls are just made of wool, of sheep wool, and that's the only thing that prevents the rain from coming inside. It's crazy. They're so thick, but it's just wool. And they build these every spring, and then for winter time they pack it together and put it in a container. So comfy here. Ernst? Yeah, his name is really Ernst, so that's what he told me. Sounds very German. Uh, gave me this um, jacket, old traditional jacket, which he said I could also use as a blanket, an extra blanket. And now I feel very warm and ready to sleep. Okay, this time I really have to wake up early tomorrow because it takes seven to nine hours to reach the second camping spot, which is in uh, Altin Arash. I think there are hot springs. Yeah, but there I will sleep in my tent, I think. I have to use it. Why did I buy it? Alrighty, then see you tomorrow. Good night. Good morning. It was a cold night, even though I had my sleeping bag and this jacket blanket. And I had another pullover that I put here, but it was still cold. And I was in the yard, so in the tent it would have been very cold. Now it's half past eight. I put my alarm at seven and snooze for one and a half hours. I should get up now, because usually the weather in the mountains is good in the morning. And I want to have a clear sky when I reach uh, the viewpoint of the lake. the official camping spot. It's across the river. This is a sauna. Yeah, warm, warm. Warm, warm. Oh wow, I think this is how they make yogurt. Water is more clean than the other one, and here you can easily fill up your water bottle. Oh, thanks for having me. 
It's still sunny, but I have to hurry up. It's gonna take me four hours to reach the top. And it will be very, very exhausting. My altitude right now is 2,500 meters and the viewpoint is 3,900. So it's gonna be an ascent of 1,400 meters in the next four hours. You remember when I said I wanted to get up early? Ooh. I started this hike at 10.30. <laughs> Salam. So now I'm at almost 3,000 meters and I still have to go in between these mountains, follow up the river and apparently from there I can see the lake. I need to hurry up because there are some clouds coming. The horse stared at me like, what are you doing here? <laughs> and actually it wasn't right, it wasn't the right path at all. I just assumed it because I saw the other two hikers when I passed them, uh, they were standing next to the river. And then they also followed me because they thought I knew the way. <laughs> so so many marmots along the way and I swear I saw one very very huge marmot the size of a five-year-old kid behind there is the lake it's like 40 minutes from here right before I made it to the top I reunited with Azamat and Nazik they had started their hike a bit earlier than me Spring onion of the mountains. And then a few steps later, I had a view I was waiting for. actual plan was it to go to Arashan today but since I started late and I really enjoyed my time here at the lake I'm kind of very late now and I feel like I just want to yeah camp here that means I will do the rest of the trip tomorrow and to save some time I will pay for a taxi from Arashan so I can enjoy the time here more yeah I know it does look crooked and it is crooked but here behind the big rocks there's not so much wind coming and I think it's gonna be less cold uh, than on the other side of those rocks so I decided to put my tent here next to my friends I think it looks worse than it is <laughs> I can actually sleep in a good 
stretch position. I have to cuddle a bit with this rock here, but it's okay, I can share my bed. Sleeping at 3,500 meters can be a problem if you easily suffer from altitude sickness. I luckily only had a slight headache. Dinner time. I'm glad about this pasta mm -hmm. from two days ago, even yeah, though it looks like rubbish. <laughs> the door of my tent became a television. Watching the mountain peaks turning orange in the evening is one of my favorite things. It's 9 p.m. Time to sleep. I hope I won't regret that I stayed here at 3,900 meters. I was even freezing at 2,500 meters. And this was even in the yurt. But I prepared myself for a very cold night. I have my beanie. I have two layers of pullovers and the top underneath. I have a winter jacket. I have my 10 degree comfort sleeping bag. Um, and I'm also wearing on top my rain jacket and my cover for my backpack. And I'm gonna sleep on my bread. <laughs> I survived. <laughs> it was not too cold. <laughs> it was just not very comfortable. Mm. What an incredible morning. So beautiful with the mountain peaks mirroring in the lake. My friends gave me some tea to warm up and I ate my pillow for breakfast. Then I soaked in as much sun as possible while I charged my batteries with my solar charger. And also my tent needed to dry, it was a bit wet from condensation. 63% I can live with that. Everything's packed, my friends have left already. I will meet them on the way. Now I will follow the other cool pass. It's gonna take around 5-6 to six hours to reach Arashan. And there are some hot springs that are waiting for me. I will never get tired of this view. I still have to walk all the way here, up there, and this is the Alakula Pass. <sighs> still a way to go. This is the glacier all the water of the lake comes from. Almost there. Oh, oh I made it. How stunning is this view, please? And I was so lucky that Azema flew with his drone and he found me when I was there sitting and then I realized he's filming and we got some really cool shots together. 
Now let's go down. Ooh, it's steep. And reunited again, the rest of my hike will not be solo. how they brought the boat here but it's a good bridge We came across a yurt where nomads lived during the summer and they invited us to try some of their cream cheese, some kind of pre-product of kurut and it tasted very very good, I really liked it Mmm, like cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fresh. It's a habit. Mmm, very nice. It's 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 very We paid only 2 euros each for using the hot spring cabins, but don't expect clean water, it was a bit slimy. <laughs> that was so good, perfect for my sore muscles. And then as planned we took a taxi, a four wheel drive to bring us back to Karakol. But honestly I did not expect the road to be like that, it was crazy. <laughs> Before I thought 20 euros per person is a bit expensive, but after being in this car for one and a half hours, I totally understand why the price is so high. I didn't even film the worst parts, I had to hold on. Respect to the taxi driver for doing this every day several times. Back at my hostel, <sighs> every step hurts. I have zero energy left from this trip, but oh gosh, it was amazing. I'm glad I did it. I need food. I only had plain bread today and a little bit of what 
we had a yurt. I'm finally losing some weight that I put on in Japan. That's actually good. I hope you enjoyed this trip as much as I did. And I'm looking forward to show you the rest of Kyrgyzstan. Good night.